For Krima Media in Johannesburg, I'm Sane Zamini, media personality and sexual rights campaigner Andile Khalesiwe is in conversation with Polity about her book titled Remembering. So Andile, for those viewers uh, who might not know you, can you briefly tell us about yourself and why you decided to write uh, this book titled Remembering? My name is Andile Khalesiwe. I was born in Midlands. I grew up there. Um, I've been in this entertainment industry since 1995, and I started off uh, my career in the music business, um, releasing about three albums, and then from there went on to television, did some radio as well. And this book is literally a reflection of some of the horrors that I've experienced along with many South African men and women. And the reason I wanted to write this book uh, and put it out there was to assure everybody like me who's been through sexual violence that your voice matters, that you are important, that your story, um, if told correctly, can help somebody else in a similar position to get to a better place. So the book is really just a live testament. The work that I do, there's always been questions, you know, Uguti, how, where do you get that wisdom? Uh, what do you know so much? Well, that wisdom comes from all the scars, you know, and all the traumas that I've been through. And of course, growth. You've already told us uh, that you grew up in Soweto and you, you refer to yourself uh, growing up there as a problem child and you also had a, a difficult relationship with your mother. What was the reason for that and were you able to mend your relationship with your mother later on in your life? Definitely. She's my mm. best friend. She's my queen mother. She's my, my angel. She's my prayer warrior. My mother is, is everything. I've since learned that relationships between a mother and a daughter can become so volatile because if the mother is a strong woman, is a strong individual, chances are she'll give birth to an equally strong young woman or young man. And so my Loga Kula, it's not a timid child, but I was always a very curious child. So everything for me was why. Even when you explained it and it still didn't make sense, I would still say why. Growing up with a very strong head of, on my shoulders and knowing uh, also bear in mind Uguti, when you uh, are a single mother and you are young, you don't want your child to go through the things that you've gone through. So a lot of the issues with me and my mom were that she was overprotective. And the sad thing is she, one of the things she was trying to protect me from was sexual violence, which happened in any way, you know? So, but yeah, to say that today, I can safely say, in fact, even before I started writing this book, that me and no, no sister, <laughs> I grew up calling a sister, because in Kuliso Gogo, you know, uh, we, we are now, I think it's, must be the fourth or fifth year that I call a mommy, which was not a thing. But yeah, she's my everything. You then met your biological father, Andile, and something happened, and you only told your grandmother and not your mother. Tell us about that terrible ordeal. Well, I was raped. I was raped by my biological father uh, on, a, on a day that I'd gone to visit him where he was staying. And little did I know, Uguti, getting to know him because I didn't grow up with him. He didn't, he wasn't present. And getting to know him at that point um, and being very curious because my father was a famous musician um, at the time that I was a little girl. And so me also wanting to be in the music industry, Mankula, was I guess what prompted the curiosity from me, you know, would say, okay, Baba and I'm batting fun and I and when I see him, he's a gorgeous looking man. You know, he's tall, he's like, he's capable of doing that. And that's why I always say that a, a, a rapist doesn't have a foreseeable or visible identity, it can be anybody. 
they can look any way, you know. Um, so yeah, I got raped by him and uh, it was at his apartment and then told my grandmother the story and, and I made her swear to not repeat what I told her to anybody and she did. And it was so interesting to read Andile that you describe rape as a spirit and you believe that it needs to be stopped uh, at the beginning, just as other cultures uh, normally will perform cleansing ceremonies. You believe that rape survivors, they also need cleansing. Can you tell us about that reasoning? Well, in Omkoka, chances are if you've been raped once, it'll happen again. If you don't talk about it the first time, if you don't stop it, if you do, if you don't do the work, whether it's therapy, counseling, uh, even cleansing, as you say. I've, I've done a lot of cleanses over the years and, and understand, Sunday, I didn't know it as I was going through it, but as you find your healing, because I've done it, I've done all kinds of healing techniques over the years, including about counseling. Um, now I use crystals, I love crystals because they not only clear your energy, but even the sims and bene, it, it is a ritual of cleansing. So a lot of the, the times in South Africa when a victim of sexual violence is being shamed, when they speak out, I mean, think about uh, a girl that we knew as Ukwezi, who had accused the president um, of, of having raped her. When the trial was going on, there was her utterances about him not being the only person that raped her, that there were other people also. And she came under fire. I'll never forget that. People were firing, you know, from all cylinders. Ubuti, unamanga. Why would you, everybody would imagine. Ganti, what people don't know is that once you've been raped, it's almost like you were tagged you have this thing on your forehead that this aura around you that you walk around with of being a victim, of being somebody who's violated. Now, if I will stop you, chances are you'll go out again. Um, even if it happened the first time, who say Kaya Uwedra, they broke in. But next time you'll be out with friends and a rapist will be in the midst. And of everybody that you are with, so it's through seeing all of those from my story and also clients since 2002 that I then came to this conclusion of which this is actually a spiritual warfare. And also the work that I'm doing um, that I help also clients to do to take back their lives. It's not something that you can do in two seconds. It literally is your whole life. And uh, fortunately for you, Andy Le, uh, you had a great father figure despite being abused by your biological father. You say your stepfather now, uh, Mr. Khalisi, made you realize that not all men are bad. Can you briefly tell us about him? Oh, he is the shining light of my life. He is my angel in heaven, wherever he is. May his soul continue to rest easy. That man, every time I talk about him, I, I choke up, I tear up because he is the reason. You see, God knows what he does. There are people in our lives who are there for particular reasons, for a purpose. If I didn't know that man, live with that man, be under his tutelage, I, I probably would have become a bitter, scorned woman, like we see a lot of women who have been raped become. We know of mothers that can't even connect with their husbands or their children or the community. Everybody has their auntie or challenge high. We know of that aunt, but we never ask ourselves, why is she this bitter? What brought her to this place? For me, it was a demonstration that was not even calculated. It was a man being himself, working from his natural state of, uh, of protector. You can nurture her, you name all of that. So in seeing that in motion, the way that he loved my mother, the way that he loved us, I was not his daughter. And after I got over the part of not liking him because I didn't know him, then I allowed myself to get to know him and allowed him to play that role of being a father to me. And he, he did more than that.
mina uno baba agasa pile mshape ni kuto uye gelo yuba baba eni uno chaiti siwe until eh, afige gus baba ni ozo fluxi chisbomo sa kuto ni uba chaiti siwe proudly so nize nyofa because of that man and and for that reason I also saw uguti we can have hashtags like men are trash what that is is really an outcry it's women saying if you know and can see and you have friends and you know you don't do anything about that then you are as good as as culpable of doing it's not to say that every single man is trash there are some amazing males even in the book i talk about that i've had some amazing people in my lives as in my life as lovers as friends um and my father you know as a, as a dad so mm. yeah we must always um as much as si fage ndugu fanele also si fage qiniso and siphakamise lawo madoda eswazi ukuthi akhona ayaphila aqotho amahle alright moving along to one of the men that you mentioned in the book um after all what has happened you also say uh, you've dated a man uh, that you are now calling in the book a perfect gentleman he's the former Kaiser Chiefs player and Bafana Bafana striker uh, Dr Kumalo it was so comforting i must say that to read that you've praised uh, him in the book can you tell us why you refer to him as a perfect gentleman well because it also comes from what i've just said now uh before this this question it, it, we are so i guess engrossed in men being such a danger to us and for me it's a it's a problematic uh, space to be in because what is a family what is a black family a black family is a is a upstanding man and an upstanding woman so if every single day we are saying the woman is a victim of this man and the woman is better self sufficient uh today's woman on her own you can have all the millions the mansions and whatever in the world as a woman but if you don't have your significant other that that other equal part of you uh, in in another inc incarnation oh penela so oh doctor with everything that was happening to me at that time i'm not writing about a doctor in my book because a uh, coming i want to pack or whatever no i'm writing about him the same way that i'm writing about my dad being an abuser i'm writing about basically i'm accounting everything that was happening the secret to life is balance you can't have the whole story be about trauma and or your whole life be about trauma and have no joy have no laughter have no peace so in and amongst all these terrible experiences that i've uh, i've gone through there was this man who wouldn't do anything that i didn't want to be done we wouldn't go to a party or or stay out late or spend a night at his house if i didn't want to if i didn't feel like it he understood ukuthi umuntu wesifazane uphathwa kanjani of course a lot of women love him he was a ladies guy that was that but why do ladies love him and love him back then is because in his company they felt like the people you know the queens that they were he didn't need to put you down to make him feel whoever he was himself he was dr kumani was good looking he was you know playing out there internationally locally whatever living his life and when you were around him whether as a friend because also this is the thing about dr he has a lot of female friends which i know which are uh he's that safe space i'm sure i'm not the only one who was also saved by him when for instance i talk about book, his friend um mm. who was trying to rape me he sent yeah. that white boy or find me as an alale ekwakhe until he knew that i was safe you know wow. so in painting this picture I, can you believe i haven't even given him the book he knows that i wrote <laughs> is it yes i told wow. him about it because it's not about him it's about what he mm. represents mm. it's about what he stands for you know mm. it could have been anybody that showed me that kind of just like my dad showed me that other side of love you know so with my biological father showing me violence turmoil and trauma 
I'm, I'm blessed that God then put other people in my life who would show me the opposite of that to balance the scale so that Nami as a woman, I become whole. Your first break in the entertainment industry we all know was singing, but then you say getting to present uh, that popular SAPC One show, one of my mom's favorite show on TV, Kumule Kaya, it made you feel part of the fabric of the society. And it was also interesting to yeah. me that even our late king, the Zulu king, approved of your work. If I may ask, Andile, what values you do say um, the show has taught you? Yeah, I just had goosies all over my body. Um, it, it was always a privilege to be a part of Kumbule Kai. I did not know in 2006 when I signed that contract that I was becoming part of such a beast. Me Nasane, I am too blessed to have been part of Indiganje in South African TV history. Wow. And who is raised Christian, not knowing much about even our culture, you know, as black people, Kumbule Kaya has been a school for me. Kumbule Kaya has been a school of life. It has been a school of familial values, love, respect you know, loyalty. Um, Kumbule Kaya has been the greatest teacher. I now do other shows and I'm now a producer all because uh, of Kumbule Kaya. And so being acknowledged by Isilo and hearing, you know, from other people and ending up at his guest house, Kwanongoma, you know, and, and, and seeing everybody going crazy, looking for him because by as Wutuyang Tanda, wanting wanting him meet him. Unfortunately, he was in job when I was there. You know, it, it, it was such a, a powerful thing because also I love languages. And even as you consume my work, whether it's on Utano or Nokolo or Kumbule Kaya before I do, whatever it is that I do, and having a conversation with someone who speaks a different language to mine, I will do my utmost best to try and accommodate them by speaking their language. And so even getting that final call, look, here's your contract, now you're gonna start. And this show is 100% Zulu. Because I never, I never learned this is Zulu Minuscolin, except for like three months Nyana, one of those times being Balegi Lekaya, and I was enrolling middle and high in the middle of the year. And I told up food, this is Zulu, Sang Shire, or this is Zulu, yes, you are, since you're cool, Sang Shire, what are my Kubek and my Pogo Pen. So fast forward all these years later, Sektiwa now, I mean, if you can even get my audition tape with the Kali Nyembis. You know, um, Utiwa Manji, Kuru Mrs. Rupel, Mas Kuna Zongi Mati, Matoni Moloban, and Senna in a manji. We've moved, my partner and I have bought a house, we moved into a new room, and we took out all the books. I saw it, and I felt so much pride. Uti, 2006, this is 2021. Look at where we are now, and you helped me. And the funny thing about it is that I'm sure I used in Molobane for the first three months. After that, I didn't need it anymore because it's ingrained, it's in my genes, it's in my cells, this language. So, and then even the guy that I write a script with, a powerful Zulu man and author as well. And it turns out it's the same guy who was helping me with this book that we are talking about. So everything is full circle. Very, very interesting book, I must say, Andile. And we'll leave uh, for, for the viewers to get this copy. And my last question to you now, a, a lot of people, they know that you are running an organization. You are a founder now as a, a CEO for an organization called Open Disclosure. It helps survivors of sexual violence. Can you briefly tell us about this organization? So I started ODF, um, we call it ODF short for the Open Disclosure Foundation. I started it in 2002, um, at the time being Semenza AYFM, that is just after I had come out to Utinami, I was a sexual violence survivor. E e ODF has since grown since 2002. We now have two offices, one in uh, Soshanguve in Tswane, and that office um, employs about 25 people. And then uh, we have another office, Soweto, and that office employs about six, seven people. 
Um, and basically we're dealing with young people, sexual violence, substance abuse, and we are out there in schools doing outreach in clinics, um, in community halls. We are open and now the Soweto wing of Open Disclosure, which is the GBV wing um, that deals specifically with, with uh, gender-based violence is run now by Yenumamano Wapongzalai, because me speaking out about my story, um, also Yamtinda as a mother, feel Luguti, okay, she failed to protect me and understood why the singer Telela Namans in Sakula. And we've had these conversations. And, you know, as a marketing uh, specialist that she was for Prasa Metro Rail, she decided, no, 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 I want to go there. And as a mother of a rape survivor, Mfuna is Londa Sako, is Londa Sam. So, enum fundi sige uma. So, wati nyahamba buza is social development in the CV, like everybody else, when you're looking for people. We did that. Sa akuluma sa ayenda yonkindo, according to the book. And then they chose it to lead the organization. And I'm happy because I can see the difference that she makes as a mother of a survivor you know, to all those people who go to that foundation. Now, during this COVID thing, she's even going beyond the counseling and the praying of, you know, my clients, but she finds them food as well, because it's a whole circle, mentally HBV. It's a whole circle. So I like that, that platform, Open Disclosure, allows people to heal all those areas. There was Andy Le in conversation with Polity about her book titled Remembering.